This example will go with chapter six, the normal distribution, and we'll talk about how to graph these problems and then how to solve them. All right, this problem comes out of your textbook. It is at the end of chapter six. The running time for videos submitted to YouTube in a given week is normally distributed with mu equal to 390 seconds and a standard deviation of 148 seconds. Part A. If a single video is randomly selected, what is the probability that the running time of the video exceeds 6 minutes or 360 seconds? Okay, so what we're asked for in this problem, we're asked for a probability and we want to exceed six minutes. Exceed means greater than or greater than or equal to, okay? And they've given us the seconds here conveniently because my mean and my standard deviation are also written in seconds. Okay, so let's go over to the next page and look at the graph. And I'm just gonna repeat our information here. We know that the mean is 390 seconds. And we know that the standard deviation is 148 seconds. And we are looking for the probability that our variable is greater than or greater than or equal to 360 seconds. So this is the question we're trying to answer. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to find a z-score because the value we are comparing to is 360 seconds. We're looking at 360 seconds or more. All right, the z-score can be found by taking the data point, x, in this case 360, minus the mean, which they gave us to be 390, and then dividing it by the standard deviation, which was also given to us to be 148. And this is going to give me, I put it in my calculator, negative 0 0.203. And I went ahead and rounded off to three decimal places, but when we use table A2, we're only going to be able to use it to two decimal places. But, okay, this is what we graphed. All right, over here on the normal curve, the mean will always go in the middle. And since we're doing this with z-scores right here, the mean is going to be equal to zero. Now, if you think about it, if we found the z-score for the mean, what we would find out is that we would be taking our data point 390 minus the mean of 390 and dividing it by the standard deviation 148. And this would give us 0 over 148, which in the calculator is just going to give us 0. So your mean is always going to correspond to a z-score of 0. Okay, That means that this 0 right here, the z-score, corresponds to 390 seconds. Okay, Now, if we were going to use the empirical rule, then we would just add 148 to get to my next uh, to get to my next point here. Add another 148. Add another 148. But I don't think, in fact, I'm sure of it. I'm not going to be able to fall exactly on top of a standard deviation because this is negative 0.2. All right. Now, if we consider this point right here to be positive one, this one to be positive two, and this one to be positive three, and this is the z scores. This is what we would get right here. We'd get a positive 1 or a positive 2 or a positive 3 based on some number here, not 360 because we've got a different number. Back here, we'll consider this to be negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Okay, now I want to graph this number, negative 0.2. Where is negative 0.2 going to fall? Well, negative 0.2 is bigger than negative 1, but it's smaller than 0, so it's going to be somewhere in this area right here. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly right. Just estimate where you think it belongs. And it's going to be a little bit closer to 0 than it is to negative 1. All right, so we're going to put that right there, and I'm just going to take away that little blobby line that I put in right here to make this a little bit clearer. Okay. And I am going to draw that line straight up, 
raise his hand. And I usually put the dotted line right here down the middle for the mean. You don't have to do that, but I usually do that. So I'll know if my z-score is to the right or to the left of the mean. Okay. And we're going to label this point down here on the axis. This is negative 0 0.2. That is my z-score that I found. Okay. And the problem was a greater than problem. We want everything that's more than 360, or in this case, we want everything more than this z-score of negative 0.2. Well, if I look at my picture, which side of the graph is going to be greater than negative 0.2? It's going to be over here on the right. And so I am looking for this area back here. Okay, and now the graph is finished. Now I just have to finish the rest of the work and actually figure out what this probability is going to be. The probability that my x is going to be greater than 360 is going to be 1 minus, and I have to do 1 minus because I'm looking for the area on the right. And then this number back here comes out of table A2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up negative 0 0.20 in table A2, and that's the probability over here. This is the probability that my x is actually less than 360. And in table A2, that number is 0 0.4207. And then when I put this into my handy dandy calculator and do that subtraction, I get 0 0.5793. And so the answer to my question right here is 0 0.5793. All right, let's go back and look at part B. Part B, suppose that the sample of 40 videos is selected. What is the probability that the mean running time of the sample exceeds six minutes? Okay, so this problem is almost exactly the same as A, except now they've introduced in a number of items that are actually going to be included in my sample. Okay, so now this becomes a probability distribution, and I'm going to have to uh, finagle a little bit with the mean, I mean with the standard deviation. Okay, let's go back here to the slide. We knew that the mean was 390 seconds. It also turns out that the mean for my probability distribution is going to be 390 seconds. They're going to be the same thing. Okay, the standard deviation was 148 seconds. And the thing that makes this one different is that now we have a sample size. And so when I go to find this the standard deviation for my probability distribution, I am supposed to take the standard deviation for my population and divide it by the square root of n. That's my formula. In this case, we're going to do 148 divided by the square root of 40. And when I put this into my handy dandy calculator, I get 23.2. Okay, just like I did before though, I still want to find my z-score and x is still going to be 360 because we're still dealing with the three minutes here. Okay, my z-score is going to change though because my standard deviation changed. All right, let's see what we get. The z-score can be found by taking our data point 360 minus the mean 390 dividing that by the standard deviation for the distribution. And when I put that into my handy dandy calculator, I get negative 1.282. All right, let's go over to the graph and draw the picture. Once again, right here in the middle, this is the mean, and remember the mean always corresponds to a z-score of zero. Back here we've got negative one, negative two, negative three, and then over on the right this is positive one, 
positive two, positive three. These numbers are just counting the standard deviations to the right and to the left of zero. And if we used our empirical rule, the 68, 99.7 rule, we would know we want to land exactly on top of one of these. But you can see from my z-score here, we're going further than that. Okay, now the question is just a matter of graphing negative 1.28. Where does it fall? Well, we know it's smaller than zero, so it's going to be to the left of the mean. It's actually smaller than negative one, but it's bigger than negative two, so it's going to be somewhere here in between negative one and positive two. And again, you don't have to put it exactly you know, where it belongs, um, just somewhere in here between negative one and negative two. And I think we know that it probably falls right in here a little bit closer to negative one than to negative two. And we want to label this. It is negative 1.28. And we'll draw our line straight up to the curve, like so. And once again, we're trying to exceed six minutes. And exceed means greater than. So we are once again looking for the area over here to the right. And that is where I'm going to shade my picture. All right. So answering my question, the probability of exceeding 360 seconds is going to be, and again, we're going to have to do 1 minus because we're looking for the area to the right of my z-score, not to the left. Table A2 gives me the area to the left. All right. This number, remember, comes out of table A2. And we are looking at negative 1.28. And that's going to give me 0 0.1003. That means this area right in here is 0 0.1003. But remember, my solution is going to be over here. And when I subtract these numbers in my handy dandy calculator, I get 0.8997. And so the answer to my question, what's the probability that in that sample of 40, the video would exceed 360 minutes? It's almost 90%. It's 89.97%. Okay. All right. I hope this helps you all with getting these graphs drawn. Um, if not, let me know.